blue um, I think my volume is kind of low There we go. Hello Sofer, how are you? Pretty tired. I was watching a 12 hour speedrun yesterday. How are you? 12 hour speedrun of what? I'm good. I, uh, I had a lot of rest over the weekend. It was pretty un uneventful. So. So yeah, I'm good. Hearts one platinum trophy. Nice. Do you play as well? And do you do speedruns? Hello Nuka Cola, how are you? Good to know. Um, I'm good. Yeah. What have you been doing? So first says now that it's alright. Speedrunning takes too much time. I'd rather enjoy the games at a normal pace. It's funny how speedrunning takes too much time. Yeah. Too much time to learn. You're right. That's a funny contradiction. Uh, Nukahola is working way too much. What are you working uh, on? Us? Where do you work? That I could support you on Patreon. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. Thank you so much. Uh, 
We got a lot of support on Patreon, like more than I expected for the first few days. Work in the hospital. Oh, cool. Must be tiresome, right? Like, do you work a night shift and stuff? Let me move this a little bit. Yeah, 12 hour shift, sometimes 24. Wow, that's insane. I guess the cool thing about being an indie developer is that you can make your own hours. I still work a lot, but um, if I don't feel like working in a day for some reason, then I can take a break and just work more the next day and s or w work on the weekend. Like, there's no hours to do, right? There's just a lot of work to do. But anyway, let's learn some Latin. So last time uh, the girl was missing. They were looking for Yulia. And uh, Coca-Cola says, yeah, that would be ideal. I wish I could make my own hours. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, you still need, need some uh, self-discipline for that. Uh, a lot of people like can't make their own hours. If they if it's up to them, then they don't get motivated. You know what I mean? They can mo motivate themselves to set some hours and work. And uh, I do have difficulty with that sometimes. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for the sub. Um, I think I had two people sub, and it's like um, the Twitch threshold for getting paid is like a hundred dollars. So <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to see that money someday. At least Patreon doesn't have that. But maybe in a, f in a couple of years I will get to receive the Twitch payment. Yeah, I'm not sure like exactly how much it is, but it is pretty high uh, from what I saw. But I, I really didn't look too much into it. I'm, I could be wrong. It's just basically I looked at it and I said, oh, this is going to take a while for me to, to get this money because it's not like I have uh, a big number of viewers. It's like sometimes tr three, five, ten. So anyway, I was I was talking about discipline and uh, yeah, how it's hard to s set your own hours, and I have trouble with that myself. But uh, something it's a skill as well. You learn to get better at motivating yourself and. Uh, setting your, your own hours, so yeah, it's something you can learn, but uh, I think I, I left Hangouts open so you saw notification for that, sorry about that. I mean, you didn't see it, but you heard it. Anyway, let's learn some Latin discipline here. Let's stay focused. Um, Delia ad cubiculum iulie it, ostium pulsat, aperit in abi cubiculum entrat. Okay, so we have a big sentence here. Let's break it down. So Delia is a slave. 
so Delia to the room Yulia's ghost literally but it's obviously Delia goes to uh, Yulia's room Ostium Pulsat uh, door knocks knocks on the door Aperit opens in cubiculum intrat in the room enters Ilik non solum Yulia Oh, I always forget Ilik. I think it's one of the useless words. It's like now, as of yet. Something like that. Or here. She. In that place there. It can be so many things. It can be she, that, or in that place. There. So, Ilik non solum Julia. I don't think they... It, they've ever used it as he or she in this book it's always there so it's like uh, there not alone Yulia so Yulia isn't there alone Etiam is with, right? Let me just make sure that is correct. No, no, to even yet. So this is like so long is alone, or or is it like to be? I thought it was alone. Yeah, alone. But is Yulia there? I can't quite figure out. Anyway, um, I already forgot Etiam. Now to oh, I hate this word. Um, but now. Sira is. So I think Yulia is not there, but Sira is. Oculi Yulia Pleni Sunt. Okay, so Yulia is there because she's not alone, because uh, Sira is there, and then her eyes. Oculi Yulia Pleni Sunt Lacrimarum. Her eyes are, are full of tears. So sad. Let's do some crying emojis in chat. Like, don't streamers usually do that? Something sad happens and people spam a lot of crying emojis. I guess we don't have enough uh, viewers for that. Anyway, her eyes are full of tears. Uh, Delia, veni in atrium, Julia. So uh, atrium is the hall, right? A room which contains the hurt for court hall principal room. It's okay. It's just the big hall. Uh, when in atrium, Yulia comes to the atrium, Yulia, Ilik pater tus te expectat. There, your father awaits you. Yulia, oculus et nasum terget. Oh, this is new. I don't remember seeing this word ever. And the music is getting intense. This is a uh, Civ 6 music. Yeah, Civ 6 music, and it got pretty loud. Um, what was it? Ter tertum Terget? Terget. Tergeo. I, I, maybe we saw it as Tergeo. 
to rub off. Wipe dry, wipe clean. Yeah, yeah, we saw it. We saw Tergio. We just didn't see Terge the conjugation. Uh, Yulia Oculus et Nasum Terget. So she rubs, she cleans her eyes and her nose. Just realized we're gonna have to get a soundtrack maybe for the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like. That's gonna be way later on, I think. My idea is to release the alpha uh, without any sounds and music, which is gonna be. It's not ideal, right? But it's just the alpha, I think. I think audio is not that important in the grand strategy games, like Paradox games. For example, one game that I find very similar in a way is Football Manager. And Football Ma Manager basically has no audio on it. Even now, even the full game basically has no audio. It's not that important. But it still would be nice to have some good music. Nuka Cola, my girlfriend, is a composer, so I might be able to help with that. Nice! Cool. Send me her um her portfolio of music. I um I get approached by a lot of musicians um when I'm making games. Like every game I've ever made, there's a lot of musicians that send me uh, their portfolios to make music like I don't get that from artists I don't get that from writers I don't get that from programmers but a lot of musicians are looking for work in games I don't know why that is but it just seems to be the case but yeah it's, it's still not easy to find someone that uh, is gonna do the music that you envision for the game that really fits the game so so yeah, but right now I, I'm not even imagining much in terms of, of music because I'm gonna leave that for later on. Um, now the music is like too quiet. Are you looking for help with that sort of stuff, though? I think so. I think I'm gonna need the uh, composers. I do intend to eventually uh, compose some of the songs myself. Like, I've done that for my last game, Rogue Mans. I wrote half of the songs myself. And they're not perfect, but they're... But they're fitting for the game, I think. It wasn't, like, a very challenging, challenging game to the music for, I think. It was... It was easy mode, in a way. So, yeah. I mean, like, art writing and all that. Oh, th that as well, yeah. Uh, I need, like, for art, I need uh, help with the portraits. The marble portraits. Because I can do them. But uh, they take a lot of time, so if I can get an artist to do that, that frees, frees up time for me to work on the prototype and get the gameplay working, which is the most important thing, right? So yeah. Um, I intend to use some of the Patreon money on uh, art for the game. I just need to research some artists. And for writing as well. Um, writing text for events, like flavor text, what happened in the event. I do need, to ha need some help with that, but that's gonna be even later than the art, I think. But anyway, where was I? Yulia Oculus et Nasum Terget, so she rubs off, she cleans her eyes and a nose. Rosam Sumit e Cubiculo Exit. So takes the roses and uh, exits the room. 
Yeah, I'm quite good at painting in Photoshop, but I've never painted a face before, so let's see if I can do the same style we've been. A lot more landscape oriented. Yeah, me too. I like I like to do landscapes. But I I've done a lot of uh face studies, especially when I started, so I I can do it. I find it really hard to create my own characters, but if I but a copying a marble bust, for example, is pretty easy for me, it just takes time. Use a tablet, yeah. I use a Wacom tablet. Wacom? Wacom? I don't know how do you, how you say that. Sira etilia post am exeunt. So Sira and Delia exit after her. I always get post and Dante confused. I never know what is after and what is before. Same, Wacom is amazing, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been using their tablet since like 2008, so that's 10 years now. Uh, when I got my first one. And then I started like getting serious about drawing and painting. Julia in atrium ad Iulium curit eque osculum dat. So Julia in the atrium runs to Julius and gives him a kiss and this was the ugliest word for kiss in any language probably because you can see how it sounds like I oculus and osculum it's so weird couldn't they come up with a better word for a kiss? but anyway Yeah. And this music changes volume so much. Civ Six soundtrack. That means little mouth in Latin. What does? Osculum. Little mouth. Yeah, but it, I had it on the here. On the left, you can see it's a kiss, but it does show up as little mouth here. Let's check Wiktionary. Come on music, get consistent with your volumes. Uh, oh yeah, I've checked this before, it does say kiss here. Yeah, kiss a little mouth, can be both. Actually, funnily enough, my degree in biology and some matter is in biology and some organisms expel water through small openings in their membranes and we call those osculum. Yeah, I, I always thought it sounds like something biological, like a medicine or something. But it's not a good word for kissing. Just my personal opinion, like that's the word. That, that is what it is. But anyway, I'm gonna switch from Latin to Roman history. We're gonna read the 
Life of Cicero by Plutarch. Eventually. Like now. So that's a terrible word for a kiss. Okay, nice. Good to know. I'm not alone. So there was nothing then on a small scale or trivial about Lentulus plans. We were we were uh, learning about the Caledon conspiracy. In fact, he had decided to kill the entire Senate. It's getting hot in here. I'm gonna turn this off a little bit. So, kill the entire Senate? That's quite a plan. And as many other citizens as possible. This sounds like propaganda. To burn down the city itself and to spare no one except the children of Pompey. Why the children of Pompey? These were to be seized by the conspirators and held as hostages oh, to secure a peaceful settlement with Pompey. I don't know, it sounds like propaganda, like nobody's gonna have a plan to kill all the senators and as many of the citizens as possible and destroy the city of Rome. Why the hell would they do that? Anyway, for it was already generally and confidently reported that Pompey was on his way back from his great campaigns. A knight, one of the knights of the Saturnalia, had been fixed for the attack, and swords, tow, and brimstone had been carried to the house of Cethegus and hidden there. They had also a force of a hundred men, each of whom had been allotted a particular section of Rome so that in a short time many people could start fires and the city would be in a blaze on all sides. I mean, starting fires, I can see you, they would do that, like, to make an attack easier. Others were to cut the aqueducts and to kill anyone who tried to bring water. There happened to be staying in Rome when the plans were being made two ambassadors of the Allobroges, a nation which was then going through a particularly bad time and was disaffected towards the Roman government. Lentulus and his party thought that this man would be useful in stirring up a revolt in Gaul, and so they took them into the conspiracy. They also gave them letters to their own senate and letters for Catalan II. To the senate of the Allobroges, they promised freedom from Rome, Roman control, and they urged Catalan to set free the slaves and to march on Rome. To accompany the ambassadors on their way to Catalan, they sent a man called Titus, a citizen of Croton, who was to carry the letters. The conspirators, however, were unbalanced characters who seldom met together without wine and women, while Cicero was following their schemes with patient care. Yeah, this is, this is like clearly propaganda, it's when you attack the personality of the conspirators, because like, they were often with wine and women, so... They were unbalanced characters anyway. It's interesting that even I, this was written many years after the fact, and he was still doing propaganda about it. So, why? It's something to look into. Why would Plutarch uh, do so much against? Uh, Catalan, even after the conspiracy failed and failed after so many years. Anyway, while Cicero was following their schemes with patient care, with sober judgment and with exceptional intelligence, he had many agents outside the conspiracy who kept a close watch on what was going on and helped him to collect evidence. 
and he was also in secret communication with people whom he could trust who were supposed to be in the conspiracy themselves. He therefore heard all about the discussions with the foreign ambassadors and with the secret cooperation of the Alobrogues laid an ambush by night and arrested the man from Croton with the letters on him. At dawn he assembled the Senate in the Temple of Concord, read the letters aloud and examined the informers. Unius Silanus also spoke and declared that Cathegus had been heard saying that three consuls and four praetors were going to be killed. So these are like ex ex consuls probably because you only had two consuls. Piso two, a man of consular rank, yeah it's it's pro consuls as well, which are ex consuls. Produced more information of much the same kind. Gaius Sulpicius, one of the praetors, was sent to the house of Cathegus where he found, apart from spears and armor, an enormous quantity of swords and knives, all newly sharpened, and that these were forbidden in Rome, inside the city itself. Finally, after the Senate had voted immunity for the man from Croton on condition that he gave information, Lentulus was convicted. He resigned his office. He was praetor at the time laid aside his purple border robe in the senate, the toga pretexta, uh, and put on other clothes more in keeping with his present circumstances. He and his associates were then handed over to the praetors to be kept under arrest, though without chains. It was now evening and the people were waiting outside in dense crowds. Cicero came out of the senate, told his fellow citizens what had been done and was ex escorted by them to the house of a neighboring friend of his, since his own house was taken up by the women who were celebrating the secret rites in honor of the goddess who is called by the Roman the good and by the Greeks the women's, the women's goddess. Why, didn't, why don't you just name the goddess? Anyway... I don't know which, which goddess this is, does anyone? Sacrifices are offered to her annually in the house of the consul and are supervised by the consul's wife or mother in the presence of the Vestal Virgins. Cicero, therefore, I'm gonna... I'm gonna highlight this. Sacrifice to offer to her annually in the house of the consul and supervised by us. Cicero, therefore, went to his friend's house and began to consider in his own mind I'm just gonna highlight this. This can be in the game. Very few people were with him. What action he should take with regard to the conspirators? The extreme penalty was the proper one for such crimes, but he shrank from inflicting it. His reluctance being due partly to the kindliness of his nature and partly also to the fact that he did not want to appear to be using his power too high-handedly in, worth, in worthlessly stamping out men who belonged to the greatest families and who had powerful friends in Rome. Yet he feared danger from them in the future if he treated them less severely. He believed that if they suffered any penalty milder than death they would, so far from accept accepting the situation, break out again and stick at nothing. They would remain as wicked as ever and would merely have fresh reasons for being infuriated. Okay, so you see what Plutarch is doing. He was setting up the reason for why Cicero uh, executed the conspirators. So it wasn't so much about... Um, 
saying that the conspirators were evil, it was about saying that Cicero was in the right. That's uh, Cicero's execution of Romans was legal and necessary and uh, the rightful thing to do and, and whatever. So that's why he was saying that they all were with women and wine and stuff like that. It was about Cicero being correct in his actions in the eyes of Plutarch. Okay. So he himself too would be thought weak and unmanly, particularly as his reputation for courage among the people of Rome was not in any case a very high one. While Cicero was in the state of perplexity, a sign was given to the women who were sacrificing. Okay, so we come back to that story. The fire on the altar was assumed to have already gone out, but from the ashes and burned back a great bright flame sprang up. It was a sight which terrified most of the women, but the sacred virgins told Cicero's wife Terentia to go at once to her husband and tell him to act as he had decided to act for the good of his country. Since the goddess was sending him a great light to promise him both safety and glory. The The Romans did this a lot. At least in theory. I think it's interesting. I'm gonna highlight this as well. Terentia was never at any time a shrinking type of woman. She was bold and energetic by nature, ambitious, and as Cicero states himself, was more inclined to take a part in his public life than to share with him any of her domestic responsibilities. So she now delivered the message and urged him to take action against the conspirators. His brother Quintus encouraged him in the same direction, as did Publius Nigidius, one of his philosopher friends whose advice he often asked and made the greatest use of in his political life. It's interesting, like, this can be... In Historia Realis, this would be everyone on the same side of the event, so this would be an event of Cicero executing conspirators, and then he would have his wife backing him and his brother and uh, Publius Negidius as well, on that side of the defense against the conspiracy, contributing with their stats. What is the French word for kiss? I missed the comment. So next day there was a debate in the Senate on the punishment of the conspirators. Silanus, who was asked to give his opinion first, said that they should be taken to prison and there should, there should suffer the supreme penalty. All following speakers supported this motion until it came to the turn of Gaius Caesar, who afterwards became dictator. At this time he was still a young man and only at the beginning of his rise to power. He had already committed himself, however, both in his political actions and in his hopes for the future, to the path by which, in the end, he changed the state of Rome into a monarchy. Others were not aware of this, but Cicero had strong grounds for being suspicious of Caesar. Okay, so Plutarch's clearly a Republican, that's why he would side with Cicero. But Cicero had strong grounds for being suspicious of Caesar, though no evidence strong enough to secure his conviction. Nevertheless, there were many who said that Caesar had a very narrow escape from Cicero on this occasion and was nearly caught. Some say, however, that Cicero purposely overlooked and suppressed the information led against him through fear of his friends and of his power, since it was clear to everyone that if Caesar were charged with the other conspirators, they were more likely to be acquitted with him 
then he was to be punished with him. I don't think Scissor was that powerful at this point. Let's do one more. When it was Caesar's turn to give his opinion, he rose and proposed that the conspirators should not be put to death, but that their property should be confiscated and that they might that they themselves should be taken to whatever cities in Italy Cicero might choose and there be kept in chains under close arrest until final victory over Calin had been secured in the field. The proposal was a reasonable one. Caesar, who made it, was a singularly able speaker, and Cicero also lent some weight to it, for when he rose to speak himself, he dealt with the subject from both point of, points of view, now putting forward the arguments for the first proposal, and now for Caesar's. All his friends too preferred the second proposal to the first, thinking that Caesar's proposal was to the advantage of Cicero, who would be less open to attack subsequently if he did not put the conspirators to death. Silanus also now took up a different position. He excused himself by saying that in his original proposal he too had never meant death. The supreme penalty in the case of a Roman senator was, of course, prison. Hmm. The first to speak against their proposal was Lutatius Catulus, and he was followed by Cato, who, in a very violent speech, joined him in trying to fix suspicion on Caesar. The speech had the effect of making the Senate both thoroughly angry and determined to assert itself, so that the death sentence was passed on the conspirators. As for the confiscation of their property, Caesar opposed this, thinking it unfair that they should retain just the one part of his proposal, which was most severe while they rejected his recommendation for mercy. When many of the senators wished to force this through, he appealed to the tribunes, but they would not do anything. Cicero himself, however, yielded the point and remitted that part of the sentence which called for the confiscation of their property. Okay. Next time, tomorrow, I think we see, we find out what happened to the conspirators. So, <laughs> see you guys tomorrow with this cliffhanger. Bye bye and uh, thanks for watching. They die, by the way.